Hey Divination, thank you for joining us in this tutorial where I will be showing you how to create a vibrant CTA section for your next Divi project. So first of all, we'll be recreating something within Photoshop and afterwards we'll use that within the Divi Builder along with other Divi building options. So without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so before we dive into the tutorial, let's take a quick look at the CTA section that will show you how to recreate within this DV tutorial. So this is what you can expect on desktop. Then we have the following result on tablet. And last but not least, this is what it looks like on a mobile device. All right, so we'll start off by creating this image over here on desktop. So these borders that you can see, and we'll need two image files because the one on tablet and phone differs from it. So the first thing you will need to do is add a new Photoshop file. So make sure that the width and the height are 800 and that the background contents are transparent. So then just click on create. All right, so we have this layer over here and we're going to change the name into background. And then we're going to give our layer a color. So for that, we're going to use the paint pocket tool. And of course, we're going to change our color into one we prefer. In this case, we're using the following color code. And make sure that you have the background layer selected when you try to use this paint pocket tool. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add a layer mask to this background layer. And we're going to continue by adding a rectangle shape with no fill and a stroke of 30 pixels. All right, so then go ahead and add the rectangle and to achieve a square, you'll have to press the shift button on your keyboard while creating the rectangle. All right, so once that's done, you can rasterize the layer because we're going to use it on the layer mask of the background layer. And then select the rectangle you've created, go to the layer mask of the background layer and use a brush. You can decide for yourself what size you want to use but you have to make sure that the color is black. That way, this part that you go over with the brush will become transparent within the layer mask. So once we hide the rectangle layer, you can see that this part has become transparent. Now the next thing that we'll need to do is erase a part of the right side over here. And I'm going to use the selection tool and afterwards just press delete while having the layer mask of the background layer selected. All right, so now I can save this file. So I'm just going to go to file, export and save for web. I'm going to make sure that my image is PNG. And now I can create the one for tablet and phone as well. So I'm just going to drag this image I just saved Go to edit, transform, and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And then I'm just going to increase the crop and fill in the transparent part of the crop. And I'm going to export my file by saving it for web. All right, so now that I have my two images, I can go ahead and create a new page on my WordPress website. And I'm going to use this page to recreate the CTA section. So just enable the Divi Builder and switch over to Visual Builder right away. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a background color to the section that's already present. And then I'm going to add a row with two columns. And before adding any modules to this row, I'm going to change some settings of the row. So I'll move on to the design tab and use right row alignment. Then I'll go to the visibility subcategory of the advanced tab and disable this row on tablet and phone. All right, so I'll continue by adding an image module to the first column 
And for this, I'm going to use the first image that I've created within Photoshop in the previous part of this tutorial. And along with the image, I'm going to use a background color. So the transparent part of the image will be used to add a background color to it. So you can basically change this whenever you want to. You can use it multiple times. So you can use the same image file and you can change the colors within DV itself. And right below this image module, I'm going to add another image module. And over here, I'm going to use a image of choice, but just make sure that it's a rectangle image. All right, then I'll move on to the design tab, open the spacing subcategory. And I want this image to overlap the previous image module. So I'm going to use minus 90% for the top margin, 40% for the right, minus 40% for the left, and then we have the following result. And to top it off, I'm also going to add a box shadow to this image module. Just subtle. All right. So now I can start adding my text modules and the button module to the second column of the row. So I'll start by adding the title text module. I'm going to use it as a heading, move on to the design tab, open the heading subcategory and use Poppins as my font family. I'm going to give it a text size of 56 pixels. Scroll down, use 1.3 for the line heat. Open the spacing subcategory I'm going to give it 30% to the top margin, 2% to the bottom margin, and minus 37% for the left margin. And that will help us blend the text module with the border image module that we've used. Then we'll add another text module, and this time we're going to use it for the description. Open the text subcategory and use Poppins as the font once again. Then scroll down and use 13 pixels for the text size. And change the line height to 2. Then open the sizing subcategory and use 83% for the width. Move on to the spacing subcategory and add minus 37% to the left margin as well. That will deliver the following result. And the last thing we'll add over here is a button module. We're going to give our button some copy. Move on to the design tab. Use left button alignment. Then we'll open the button subcategory and use a custom style for this button. Use a text size of 14 pixels, a white text color, and a black background color. Put the border width to 0 pixels. Add 1 pixel to the letter spacing. Again, use pop-ins for the button font. And use the following font weight. And last but not least, Enable uppercase. Then we'll scroll down, open the spacing subcategory. And again, we're going to give the left margin of our button module minus 37%. And we're also going to add some custom padding just to make our button look better. All right, so we're done with this row. So I'm just going to clone it, change the image module over here. And I can also change the color of the first image module that we've added. So in this case, I'm going to use the following color code. And as you can see, these match perfectly, but differ enough from each other. 
Now I'm going to create the phone and tablet version. So I'm going to add a row with one column. Before adding any modules, I'm going to open the row settings. Let me just put that to tablet mode so you can see it all happen. And I'm going to add the second image module we've created with Photoshop to the first column background. And I'm going to make sure that I set the image repeat to no repeat. And now I can also add a background color to my first column, which will give the background image a color so again you can decide for yourself what color you use over there and i'll move on to the sizing subcategory of the design tab use custom gutter width and use a value of one for the gutter width and i'll open the spacing subcategory and add 70 pixels to the bottom margin last but not least i'm going to disable this on desktop because we have a version for desktop already and I'll start by adding an image module. Move on to the design tab of this image module, open the sizing subcategory and use 71% and the center module alignment for this image module. Open the spacing subcategory and add minus 50 pixels to the top and 10 pixels to the bottom. And again, add that subtle box shadow to this image module as well. Then I'm going to clone all of these text modules and button module and place them right below the image module I've just added to the column. And of course, we're going to need to make some changes to them, but you know, it's quicker this way than starting from scratch. All right, so start by opening the title text module, going to the design tab, opening the heading text subcategory and changing the text size into 36 pixels and use center text alignment as well. Then open the spacing subcategory and make sure all of the custom margin values are gone. And now we can start making some changes to the body text module. So again, we're going to the design tab and we're going to use center text orientation. Then open the sizing subcategory and we're going to select center module alignment and change the width into 62%. And we're also going to make sure that there's no left margin and a button margin of 50 pixels. All right. And then we'll change the button module as well. Move on to the design tab, use center button alignment, opening spacing subcategory, Add 150 pixels to the bottom and make sure that there's no left margin. And here we have the result. So we're going to clone this row. And again, we're going to change this image module over here. And if you want to change the color of the column one background color, you can do that as well. And that will show up within the transparent part of your image. And in this case, we're using the following color code. So here we have it. This is the result. Now let's take a final look at the result that we've shown you how to recreate. So this is what we achieved on desktop. And we have the following on tablet. And then we have this on phone. Well, that was all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our social media channel so you'll get a notification every time we have something new for you. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.